Sorry about your boy. Well, his sister slams the car door on his finger, and uh, it'll be all right. We're just getting it dressed up. Very bad? No, well, it's pretty badly cut up, you know. Sound like you got a democratic system. <laughs> I hope not. Been there with Tom Dewey. He's listening to us talk. Uh, I called you. We set 30 B 52s over a square mile area in South, repeat South Vietnam. They just dropped their last bomb. We found a, a concentration of a, a Viet Cong operation under the brush, uh, hidden, and we think that it's been the seat of the uh, direction of a lot of their activity. And there'll be uh, some excitement on the television and radio about P-52s. But uh, we, uh, we, our best advice, that's the only way we could get them. The fighter bomber couldn't take an area that big in coverage in time without their getting out. So we moved the P-52s in Okinawa. I sent good pastor up uh, before the flight this morning to go with General Eisenhower. He thought they ought to be done. He also thought we ought to approve uh, uh, Westmoreland's request for these uh, uh, troops uh, to, to be needs out there to protect these bases because we're not going to be able to protect them with South Vietnamese. And uh, it looks like our B-52 raid is a uh, success at the moment. Do they use conventional uh, weapons? Uh, yes, yes. They do. Oh. Uh, really, uh, I think this is good. I don't know what's happened. Laird is. Uh, is he uh, off his rocker? Well, uh, actually, the statement, uh, if it was read in its entirety, I don't think you would disagree with it too much. But they took one sentence out of study, and uh, I think they distorted it. The one question that I hope we can sit down and talk about before uh, we go any further is how much are we going to use the ground for? Only when and if and as necessary to protect our national interest. And presently we have 12,800 of them up there, uh, down there. Uh, we will, it uh, uh, takes about a little better than three to two because the advisors, we have so many advisors and uh, uh, we uh, have so many uh, services and we're building airports and CBs and everything else. And we got about seven, eight thousand uh, combat air people uh, that uh, uh, in our air operation. We got about twelve, thirteen thousand of combat on the ground. We'll uh, move those up. That's out of the fifty-four. Uh, out of fifty-four thousand, roughly got twenty to thirty. Uh, we're moving it up to seventy to seventy-five. And out of that, I would guess we'll get another eight or ten thousand combat. Now, uh, those combats uh, will uh, uh, go out. We'll try to keep them distance where they can't lob their mortars in for three miles. We'll constantly be on patrol. We'll release uh, an equal amount of South Vietnamese. We've only got four to one now to do the actual fighting. That when they get caught, when they get in trouble, uh, if they're going to get wiped out, they call us, we'll come to their rescue. They did that last week. Westmoreland said, I got the authority to do it. It's an emergency and I'm going to authorize it. If you want to cancel it, you can cancel it. All right. Uh, I came back and said, hell no, I'm not going to cancel it, but I just hate to see uh, uh, 1,200 American boys involved, but uh, this is no Sunday school picnic. And you're on the ground, and I can't uh, tell a commander on the ground that he's got to let, the, let his people get wiped out or let his allies get wiped out. That's why we're out there. So um, I fully agree with uh, that aspect of it. The only thing, if we're going to do more in an offensive way, you know what I mean, on the ground, then I think we all ought to sit down and talk about it. Well, I'll be glad to do that if I can stay out of the paper. I don't want to tell the uh, I don't want to tell either the the Vietnamese, North Vietnamese, or to tell China. And I haven't been to meeting yet that they we don't get something out about what happened. But I don't want them. The damn State Department announcement the other day that we had discretionary authority to protect yourselves, which is a uh, 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 which is a uh, what's the damn word? Fuck, uh, implied in every. Uh, operation. Uh, you don't send a general out and a bunch of damn troops and tell him that he's got to get him killed before he answers. I agree with you a thousand percent. 
thousand. So uh, uh, we, uh, uh, that's all that happened. I haven't issued an order. I haven't talked to Westmoreland. Westmoreland hadn't, hadn't asked me to issue an order since he went out there. Westmoreland went out there uh, from West Point because he's the best general we had. His, uh, his orders uh, when he went out there were to take our people and advise those folks and resist aggression. Right. Now, uh, uh, he, he's not going to get in there in the front line with American troops unless he has to. And if he does, he's not going to let them get killed. And that's that simple. Now, they ask this damn fool McCloskey, old State Department, they ask you, like you're talking about Laird, they ask you to quit beating your wife. Either way, you answer the trouble. They said, uh, has Westmoreland got authority? Keep our American boys from getting killed. The answer is yes. Well, uh, when did Johnson give him that authority? So this damn fool says, "Well, I, I don't know, but I'm sure he got it. And I'm sure he got it. To, I'm sure he got it before they went out there. Well, they just arrived. You see, a bunch of them. So then the headline read: Johnson enters new phase combat war in uh, Vietnam. So when I looked at the damn paper, I called up and said, who's smoking marijuana around here? I haven't been in touch with Westmoreland, and I'm supposed to know what's happening. And think I do. Well, nobody is issued an order of any kind. So I came in the next morning, and I said, here's a statement. I want you to put it at your 11 o'clock briefing. No order's been issued. There's no change in the situation. This man has the authority he's always had, and uh, we're not directing anybody into combat. But if anybody needs to combat, they're ready and they'll be prepared to give an account of themselves. So I issued that statement. Then they wrote the story, great frustration, great uh, uh, difference in opinion. Uh, the government right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing and Johnson is a dictator. That's what's written. Now, uh, that's the press and they got three stories where they ought to have any. Follow me? Don't worry about that kind of thing. I'm not worried, I'm explaining to you so that uh, you on this team, right. your country, and a good many of these boys, I'm told, are Republicans. I don't think they use good judgment in their party, but they have in their country, and they're out there fighting. And I think you ought to know the facts. Now, here's a paragraph of uh, a confidential memo from uh, General Goodpast, who breathed Eisenhower last night. I met with him two hours in his office in Gettysburg. I reviewed uh, with Eisenhower the essential points of Westmoreland's message setting out his concept and his analysis for additional needs for U.S. forces in South Vietnam. Of course, that's a uh, combat. As requested by the President, I went into full detail and gave him all the matters of how they would be involved, the mobile divisions, and how to provide additional brigades for use in the coastal base area. Now, that's the first 75,000. That's an additional 20,000 we've already ordered in. But he's got requests for a good many more thousands that we haven't acted on. We're not. And I'm just uh, getting judgments, and Eisenhower uh, has had a hell of a lot more experience than I have, and very frankly, I get about as good a judgment as from him on these matters. I do from my Joint Chiefs, uh, and he's always careful and always reasonable, and I think highly experienced, uh, and I think more so than my own men got. Eisenhower considered the matter at some length. A first question to consider, he said, is what is the end of all this can be? He commented, we have now, quote, appeal to force, unquote, in South Vietnam. And therefore, quote, we have got to win, unquote. For this purpose, simply holding on or simply sitting passively in static areas is never going to suffice. He added, there's no use building bases if you're not going to protect them and if you're not going to use them. The only reason for creating them is to make it possible to take the offensive and to try to clear as many areas as possible. That's what we did this afternoon. He thought we should not only support Vietnamese forces in action, but he thought that we should undertake offensive operations ourselves. After some further discussion, he indicated that he believed Westmoreland's recommendation should be supported. He was strongly impressed by Westmoreland's